this quilt, look at this, isn't this cool? This is so great. This old quilt came to me from my parents. They bought it at a thrift store for $20. It's in rough shape, but it's still really cool. And there's so much we can learn from uh, this old quilt and just ah, take it all in. The age on this quilt, I'm not quite sure. I think it was made in two parts. I think the top was made at one point and I think around the 1940s, 1950s, just because of the fabrics and doing some research on those. The backing, however, is newer. It's this Christmas print, which we'll look at in a bit. And I believe that this was finished later because of the backing being newer and because of the finishing, which we'll talk about all of that as we take a closer look. Also, like I said, it is in rough shape. I will, I think, be taking this apart. And again, I'll talk about all of that as we dive in. My name is Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Lessons From An Old Quilt. I can't wait to get started and dig in and take a closer look at this beauty. Let's go. Oh, this quilt is so cool. I love it even though it's in rough shape. I still love it. All right, so let's take a look at one of these blocks. And you can see the block here. I don't think I have to outline it with the papers, but I do want to show you that it is made up of smaller blocks. So I am going to do that here. These are kind of big, but you can see here there's a four patch and then there's a four patch up here. So there's two four patches with the dark fabric facing this way. So it gives you this line. And then there are two half square triangles here. So here's one, here's the other facing in. Very simple block, four patch, half square triangle, half square triangle, four patch. And the colorway with it facing in like this, at least on this block, some are different, gives it this wonderful look and it's called a Northern Lights block. Actually, I think technically the Northern Blights block, all of these pieces are the same fabrics like this one. You know what, we're gonna give her some grace and we're gonna call this a Northern Lights quilt. <laughs> it is absolutely 100% scrappy. There are 81 of these blocks in this quilt. Let me move it over, it's kind of heavy. Each block measures four and a half inches by four and a half inches finished. So it would be five inches by five inches unfinished. Aren't they cute? They have such cool fabrics in them. I love them so much. Because there are 81 blocks, there are nine rows across and nine rows down, making the entire quilt 68 inches by 68 inches. So it's a nice size quilt. Some of the blocks, as you can see over here, are cut off because when the maker made this using an envelope fold, meaning that they sandwiched the batting, then the backing, then the top with the top and backing right sides together. They sewed around the perimeter and then turned it through. And that's how this is finished. Now these blocks here are all made by hand and the sashing is even stitched by hand, which you can see it right here, all the, the stitches that are pulling out, which is incredible. But the backing and the finish on this was all done by machine. And that's another clue that it is or was finished a little bit later than this actual quote was put together from the top. The blocks themselves, the fabrics are just so incredible. They're so much fun to look at. I of course love orange, as you know, and this is one of my favorite blocks, but there's so many wonderful prints in here. Some are repeated, some are not. Some are configured a little bit differently, but overall it's just, it's such a cool, cool quilt. The sashing strips are very wide. They're four inches. Now the block itself is four and a half. So it's almost the exact same size as the block. It gives this wonderful dramatic feel. I love that. It just makes it sparkle in my opinion with these tiny little blocks, this extra large sashing. It just, it's something, it does something. It gets me very excited about quilting when I see this. This is hand tied. You can see the ties in it. There are by far not enough ties to hold it, which is probably partially why it's falling apart a little bit. Another thing I wanna point out is that these blocks, even though at a distance they appear to be at the same level, they aren't. So you can see, let me get a piece of paper. Here we go. You can see how this one is not lined up with this one. And then we'll move it over. And this one is not lined up with this one. So they're a little, you know, wonky. But if I hadn't shown you that, you probably wouldn't have known that. So that's a really good lesson we can learn from this quote. I'll talk about more lessons later. Don't get hung up on that because I don't, honestly, maybe you did notice it. I didn't notice it when I first saw it. It was once I started studying it that I noticed it. So if you're a little off, a little wonky, who cares? Who cares? It's all okay. All right, let's turn it over and look at the 
backing. Okay, this Christmas print is so cool. And that's what I think of when I see this. Maybe it's not really a Christmas print. It is pieced, and it's pieced in a few different places. Here you can see that the maker took some time and matched the seam for the most part. It was hard to see you because of these stripes. Really well done. But in other places, like, I think at the end here, where is it? Here. The maker didn't really line it up super well, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And it is kind of floppy, and the reason it's floppy is because there aren't enough ties. Let's flip it back around, take one last look at the top. Oh, so pretty. Look at this yellow fabric, oh, the feed sacks. Oh my goodness, the feed sacks are so great. This just is a great quote. I love the fabrics, I love looking at it, I love studying it, and I just wanna quickly show you the edge here where it is falling apart and how this is kind of dry rotted. You can look at how easily that tears. So I don't know if I'll be able to reuse this. There's also dust coming out of it. The batting is an old blanket. You can see that here. It has stripes. It's in really rough shape. Here, let me turn one of these over so you can see. This quilt has either been really loved or really abused or maybe a little bit of both. It definitely needs some love, some TLC, which I intend to give it. Look at that. It just so easily tears. So this bluish green fabric may not be usable, but I'm hoping the blocks at least are. Lessons that we can learn. So many, this is always my favorite part of the video. I love sharing the lessons I learned from this quilt or all the quilts in this segment because there's so much we can learn as modern makers from these old beauties. The first lesson, of course, as you probably guessed, is that extra wide sashing. For me, I tend to follow the rule. I think it's half the size of the block is the sashing size. But when I started studying this quilt, I realized that that extra wide sashing really made a difference in this quilt, especially with those small blocks. They seem to be floating. I love the look of that. I will definitely incorporate that idea of the wider sashing strips in my future quilts. Next is that unexpected or fun backing. This isn't a Christmas quilt, or at least I wouldn't call it a Christmas quilt, but the backing seems to be very Christmassy to me. What do you think? Do you think it's like Christmas? But the colors in the backing do kind of match some of the scraps in this quilt, but not really. It was just very unexpected when I saw it, and I definitely will be reusing that backing if I take this apart. And finally, the last lesson that I'm gonna talk about here, there are more lessons on my blog, by the way, but here on this video is knowing when to take it apart, which is exactly what I'm going to do after I record this video. I will also record some segments of that. I'll probably put it in a short, I'll at least talk about it in a future video because I, I want to save this quilt as best as I can. Here's my philosophy on that. If it is a damaged quilt, especially, any, well, any quilt really, the best way to preserve these old quilts, in my opinion, totally my opinion, a lot of people have many different opinions about this, is to honor the maker. So when I'm looking at something like this, and I know this probably, if it left this way, after I'm long gone, we'll probably end up in a dumpster and I don't want that to happen. So my goal is to honor the maker in the best way by re either repurposing this quilt or repairing it or whatever I need to do. I'm not sure what I'm gonna need to do until I start to tear it apart, but I definitely know that this does need to be taken apart. I'm also not sure exactly what I'm gonna make with it. It really is gonna be depend on the condition and what I see, if there's some dry rotting, like I had said, or other issues that I just cannot repurpose it or repair it. I'll find something to do with it, whether it's a tote bag or something. Knowing when to do that is tricky and it's really a personal choice. But for me, again, I honor the maker. However I can honor the maker, that's what I do. I have so many more quilts to show you in my collection. They just keep coming in, especially this time of year with yard sales and auctions and all of that wonderful stuff. So I am not in any time running out of quilts. Keep watching. I think this was my 72nd episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. And I also have tutorials. Speaking of tutorials, Tutorials. I hope to make a tutorial on this block as well because it's a really fun block and it's a great scrap buster. So stay tuned for that. Follow along. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I will see you real soon. Bye.